Hey friends and welcome to another YouTube video. Today we're going to talk about the full moon eclipse happening on Sunday, May 15th. Um, it's a full moon in Scorpio. Scorpio is known for being intense and this is a full moon eclipse and eclipses are also known for being intense. So basically what's happening is we're, we're finishing the window of eclipse season um, that is book ended by the full moon eclipse in Scorpio this Sunday and which started with the new moon eclipse in Taurus on um, oh, it was it April 30th it was in Taurus that cycle has been about um, you know in, in my words revitalizing your self-care revitalizing the things you care about your value system like there might have been a lot of things in the last two weeks that have maybe clarified for you um, what your purpose is, what you feel like your purpose is. And while that's happening and all that stuff is good and, and should feel good, um, it doesn't come with some sort of, without some sort of release of that which is old, like old beliefs, old ways of doing things um, that, you know, we might just call our shadow selves. And if sitting down to do this video is anything like a, a micro scale of the energies as a whole, I'll just tell you, like, I it was very resistant, felt very resistant for me to sit down and finally do this Scorpio full moon video for a plethora of reasons. Ones that don't matter here necessarily, but what I do want to say about that is that that energy of resistance of um, feeling maybe you're not ready to step into that purpose that you're, that is becoming illuminated for you. Are you going to listen to that voice or are we going to fall back on our comforts? You know, I'm thinking now the, the image of the ghost card from the, um, from this deck comes to mind. In fact, he's down here because today I did a card of the day. It came out as the 10 of cups and underneath was the ghost card. This was like a, in, in the mornings I pull cards for myself, for myself, for <laughs> myself. Um, I mean, what's the saying is that, you know, happiness is here for us. The Ten of Cups is all about happiness, contentment, and it's like the ultimate happiness. Like the one that where, where you finish, you know, where it feels like you've achieved all that you've set out to do. And it just feels really good on the, at the bottom of the deck, the ghost, the ghost is about the stories we tell ourselves to stay comfortably scared. It's the ways in which we speak to ourselves that maybe say, we're not ready for this next chapter. We're not ready to step into our power or whatever it is. Okay, so in a nutshell, these are the energies that, that we're dealing with and maybe it's happened for you already or it will happen for you exactly on Sunday. I mean, I don't really believe that's the case, but like, there's always a shadow period before and after and these energies sometimes I'll do readings and it'll be relevant for me later down the line and I'll think back and I'm like oh my gosh so that's that's how that worked right and that's how we come to know the meanings of the cards for example or I'll realize that it's already happened for me and it's usually for me personally it's it's that it's already happened for me because I'm reading so much into it and I'm asking very specific questions about points in time in the future and about specific celestial movements and that's why um, because this is a really important moon about releasing something and if you remember last week's video about the weekly energy there was like some romantic stuff flying around if that's happening for you then this full moon in Scorpio may bring some um, revelations around is this romantic partner right for you? Uh, maybe there's like a reunion of sorts that's really intense. Like all of those things are possible with this moon because Scorpio is also a bit of a sexy moon. Okay, it's about, yeah, just having fun. Um, but more so than that, I, that's, that's possible when you release negativity. When you release the negativity around ideas of love, that's when love show, comes in. So it's about doing that kind of work of releasing 
um, ego, releasing expectations. Um, I'll also add it's about taking responsibility for your expectations and how that may have caused, um, you know, might have caused like your own demise, you know, your own self-sabotage when we have expectations on things. So with that, um, oh yeah, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. So where is Scorpio in your chart? Um, for me, Scorpio rules my first house. The houses are really good to know. So if you have like a planet in Scorpio, then you'll know and it, it like use like an app like CoStar or some other, or, you, or even if you just have your printout of your birth chart, you will know where Scorpio is. So the full moon is in 25 degrees Scorpio and you can look up where that's happening in your house. That house is being illuminated for you. So it's gonna give you a lot of information about how you should be using your house. For me, it's happening in my first house house of identity um, if you need help figuring out where it is in your in your chart you could just leave a comment and I can help you figure that out um, but that's just an example of how you can take the full moons and new moons or or whatever and um, get more information about how this is going to impact you specifically Scorpio is intense if you remember last week's reading again, referencing the, the advice there was like the wildness. Like sometimes we do need to do something that feels a bit wild, something out of our comfort zone to get to the next level. Similarly for, you know, another group of you, it might be that you've been a little intense and you need to scale it back some and, um, you know, bringing more of that, um, more of that new moon Taurus energy into it. Because if you missed that step, of um, doing everything with some sort of purpose, something that is illuminated for you, that is meaningful. Where do you create meaning in your life? If you miss that step, you should go back and, and, and maybe make an assessment of it, honestly. So with that, let's get into a reading. We're going to channel this full moon Scorpio into this reading and just get some messages that maybe I haven't said specifically or for anybody who's watching or will find this. We just want to get some messages for anybody this will reach. Positive messages only. That's why I use these cards because these cards are so positive. They're really nice. And I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I know I do my nine card spread. Here we go. Full moon Virgo, you are good enough. Remember I said about the self-talk, got to stop the self-talk that says you're not good enough because you are good enough. Third quarter moon, adjustments are required. I feel like this is the, the stage of the moon that we're at now at the, at the time of this recording. It's a few days before the full moon. It's actually Friday the 13th. Woo. Adjustments are required. I mean, what that means is like right before we're the finish line, we might be very close to achieving something, having something that feels just right, but an adjustment is required to cross the finish line. And I have to show you for you to believe this. The full moon Scorpio came out. It's time to release negativity. Of course it is. Of course it is. So, the message I'm getting here is like, really, yeah, what do you have to do in your life right now that'll make you feel like you're the shit? Because that's the energy you want to be in. That's going to help you release negativity. It's going to put you in a positive mind state. Think about your routines. You know, what, what is your morning routine, your evening routine? Who are the people you surround yourself with? Are they supportive? Are they, or are they really just draining your energy and, and kind of using you? <laughs> that's funny. The Ten of Swords came out as the card that's you, the queer, the collective. The Ten of Swords, the end of a destructive cycle. 
this card is sometimes also called like a friend's betrayal. So this might be a reading for somebody who feels like they've been used, um, or maybe you feel like you've just gone through the ringer of some like really intense um, things happening in your life that don't feel good, that literally could be painful. Um, so that's who this is for. These readings will not resonate for everybody, but if this feels like this is unfolding to be for you, keep watching. Keep watching. Um, but if you're going to end it here, make sure you like the video, subscribe, so I can keep making videos for you guys. The opportunity is the hanged beast. Which is... Um, Oh my gosh, why am I blanking on... This is this is based on the Rider Waite. Uh, it's the Hanged Man, right? The Hanged Man. The Hanged Beast. But it's a bat in this case. The bat is also symbolic of our fears. It's symbolic of our subconscious. The Hanged Beast, he hangs upside down. But he is illuminated at the same time. This sort of wisdom, this flavor of wisdom that is here and available to you comes from taking the back seat taking a step back to see the bigger picture of something. It's about acknowledging that in life there isn't always forward movement. Backwards movement is not bad. Um, we need periods of time to regroup ourselves so that we can continue moving forward. So if you're feeling a bit stuck right now, or if you're feeling like you can't move forward and you're so you're not good enough for this thing that you've been working towards it's totally not true challenge king of cups hmm so this is about staying um, stay pretty even keel about your situation whatever is happening um, could feel like you're in the middle of a storm but this hanged beast it's like the hanged beast that energy is in the eye of the storm where there's not much going on and that's where the true power of the king of cups really resides is that there could be anything going on around them and they know how to deal with almost any situation because they have a deep understanding of themselves they're not lying to themselves they're honoring what they feel in any given moment. That's where peace comes from, is from weathering the storm. So if there is a storm out there for you right now, just know it will pass. How you deal with this is very indicative of where you are on your healing journey. Because healing hasn't shown up, but like, what is this all for anyway, right? Like, we're all healing something. We're all at different times. Um, having to deal with um, turbulent um, events that either happen around us or that come up within us. With the full moon and Scorpio, both could be true, but I will say that I feel, feel like this is really more about what's coming up inside of you to be released. That's why the feelings of discomfort, that's why the feelings of, um, I said discomfort, but also just like, yeah, the ego getting in the way, the mind. The Ten of Swords, it's all about the mind. So yeah, it is about self-talk. What do you want? The Five of Cups. I feel like you're wallowing a bit. Yeah, okay, let's just keep going. You're definitely at a crossroads right now. You're definitely at a crossroads. And I feel like things will start to turn around once you turn around. And what do I mean by that? you got to look at this card. The Five of Cups shows a figure looking at three cups that have spilt over. Ignoring the two cups that are still standing. The message of this cup is that, yeah, we're dealing with a lot of grief. Um, a lot of heavy emotions. But... If we focus on the things that aren't working, we're not really letting them go. We have to let those some things go and turn around, literally, and be grateful for the cups that are still standing. That's how you get your power back. And that's immediately followed by the Strength card. 
strength is Leo energy. So, I mean, it is, it is wanting you to sort of, to, to um, revitalize you with its sort of like fiery inspiration um, that comes with fire, right? Inspiration energy that comes with fire and willpower and desire. How do you revitalize your own desire? Stay true to it. I think you got to stay true to it. And, and the strength card is really the card of fear again, but showing up in a way that, um, that really asks you to have more compassion for yourself. This is about self-love. This is about self-healing. You're at a crossroads. Are you going to make a different decision today or tomorrow? You can wake up any day and decide to make a different decision. And the reason I say that is we have the wise old tree showing up in the past foundation. I think that you're just really used to and you're really stuck being in the ways that you know how to be. Um, even though things are changing around you. Where's my focus? There it is. The wise old tree. The wise old tree says, sure, wisdom is good. But at what point does it become limiting that we, you know, solidify the methods, the processes, the thoughts, our emotions, our reaction to things, how we process things? Like, when does that just become an automatic um, program that no longer serves us? That is the entire purpose of this eclipse season. I think if this reading's for you, you got to realize that there's, you got to let some things go. And it's okay for you to let them go. Even if you love them, even if you care about them. If it's not supporting you, you have to look at why you're, you know still in this still still attached to it somehow i guess well the tower showed up and that card is always upside down that's so interesting okay let's move this over i just need some room the moon's underneath the moon riding the wave of the unknown yeah so you may or may not be aware that you're dealing with subconscious thoughts and feelings you may not know what to do with them you may not understand them or be able to translate them so just take some time to um i don't know meditate the meditation card is on here the four of swords is showing up in the environment so some advice work on creating an environment for yourself this weekend um, and honestly all week following the uh, full moon Create a peaceful environment for yourself so that you can get more in touch with what's going on because um, I think that if you can get more solid in yourself, you'll be more open to allowing things to change. Sometimes it's just about allowing things to change. We don't have to change very much because the world is always changing around us. In meditation as well, like when we're resting, well, well rested, um, in a meditative, self-reflective state, that's when we also can glean how we've changed. We have already changed. And once you accept the change within yourself and say, I want to be different, you're, the environment around you will reflect that. The universe will bring the changes that want to come in anyway. Um... The summer card is, is here reflecting as well as like the card that's showing up as you. Summer is a lovely energy. It's about, you know, there being a lot of life and everything. And, you know, the birds are flying, the, the bugs, are, uh, bugs are out, and the, the snakes swirling around. You know, it's just, it's a card of life. Summer's hit in Chicago for sure. I don't know if you can hear my loud ass fan, but I could not sit back here without some kind of fan. The lesson of the summer card is that the sun, while it provides a lot of life and joy, and it, it radiates, we also need to take breaks from the sun. So this is about taking shelter in the trees, in the shade of the trees. It's a nurturing card as well. So, you know, make sure you're taking care of yourself on all fronts where you're doing things that make you feel happy and positive 
And at the same time, those things can come from not necessarily being out in the world and socializing or, or um, you know, traveling, but we can travel in our own minds. Also in dreams, I mentioned dreams because the Nine of Swords is here as the outcome. I feel like dreams are the language of the subconscious. If you're having a lot of weird dreams right now, <laughs> that would make sense. So um, do what I do and like have a dream journal by your desk where you can like wake up in, in like this half lucid state. Um, jot some notes down. It doesn't have to be coherent, but just write it down. And then you don't know what will happen with that information later. But I feel like the purpose of this reading, um, for whoever it's for, for the collective, is to find more compassion for yourself. I feel like this is about finding forgiveness and letting things go that are no longer um, serving you, for sure. I know that sounds super cliche um, in as far as tarot is concerned, um, but somebody needed to hear that. Somebody needed to hear it because sometimes life dishes out a bunch of bullshit. Ten of swords, energy. And someone is, is possibly grieving, you know. When we, when we change too, when we, when we decide we're changing and want to embrace new parts of ourselves and old parts of ourselves die, you know, when we, like trees that die every season or leaves. It's good to take some time out to see how we're changing every, every year, every season, because we do change. You don't think that you might. Um, you might want to start a little gratitude journal or um, every week you reflect on something that happened, something good that happened this week. Or if you really like to write, you can do it every day or once a month. I feel like that's the kind of like um, repetitive hab like good habits you can do for yourself. That's just like really showing you who you are and how you're changing. And I, I'm getting here that it might be scary because the tower is here. Tower is about sudden change. I don't think that this change, <laughs> there is a change that is happening suddenly. It might be true in your case, but I feel like it's the, the flavor that's on here is it's wanting to show you like, look, look, you have changed. You are different. Your life wants to change based on, you know, these new desires that you have, maybe what you want to accomplish in life or who you want to be. But this is for definitely for somebody who's struggling to embrace those ideas or just isn't feeling like they have what it takes to step into that. The cards say you do. It says you are good enough. Why don't we get like a couple of the Moonology messages? Because I like reading from this book. Let's see. Full Moon Virgo. Oh yeah, and the full moon Scorpio in here, it says, um, emote, it's all better out than in. It's time to move from living fearfully to living joyfully. Mm -hmm. Okay, full moon Virgo. Find a balance between the cosmic and the mundane in your daily life. Worrying too much will attract more things to worry about. Stop second guessing yourself and raise your karma, karma by doing something good for someone else. Yep. Remember, Virgo is the sign of like health, service, and assessment. So we can only, for example, love somebody or do something, care for another person the way we care for ourselves. So if you feel, if you feel like your relationships are suffering um, and you're unable to, you know, move forward in that particular direction, it's really wanting to show you that you need to work on yourself a little bit more. You need to give yourself that energy that you're putting out into the world. Happiness comes from within, for sure. For sure. Okay, I'll leave it there. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, share, if you will. Um, I'll be working on another weekly energy video. Um, I'll probably record it today right after this one um, for next week's energy. And yeah, I'll keep doing the weeklies. Um, I'll keep doing the lunations. 
and I'll figure out what else I want to do from there. Um, if you have ideas of what you'd like to see, just let me know. Pop it in the comments below. All right, take care and have a good one.